Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the National Security Advisor and the Commander of the Royal Guard Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force His Highness Lieutenant Colonel Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Safriya Palace today. His Highness Sheikh Nasser presented the members of the Royal Guard following their historic achievement of climbing Mount Everest in Nepal. At the beginning of the meeting, the leader of the Royal Guard team, Major Mohammed Hamad Al Khalifa, gave a speech in which he expressed honor in meeting His Majesty the King, affirming that this honoring is a source of pride in His Majesty's support for all the people of Bahrain in various fields, which instills into them courage and determination to achieve more excellence and success. He affirmed the unit's readiness to fulfill all tasks assigned to them. He affirmed that His Majesty's support and care encouraged them to complete the task and raise Bahrain's flag at the world's highest summit. He expressed thanks and gratitude to the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General Ismail Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Royal Guard Special Force Commander Lieutenant Colonel Ismail Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa for their follow-up and support. بشتى الميادين ونحن رجالكم في وحدة الحرس الملكي رهن إشارة جلالتكم وعلى أتم الجاهزية في كل المهام التي تسند إلينا سيدي أن اهتمام جلالتكم الشخصي واتصالكم الهاتفي بالفريق والذي وصلت فيه رسالة جلالتكم إلى الجميع من أعلى قمة في العالم وأن إطمئنان جلالتكم حفظكم الله على أحوالنا وسلامتنا كان لنا أكبر حافظ ودافع للإنجاز لهذه المهمة لرفع راية البحرين على أعلى قمة في العالم ولتبقي هذه الراية خفاقة بإذن الله تعالى بقيادة جلالتكم حفظكم الله ورعاكم في كافة المحافل الدولية والعالمية سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة لا يسعني هنا إلا أن أتقدم بخالص الشكر والامتنان لسيد اللواء الركن سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة مستشار الأمن الوطني قائد الحرس الملكي وإلى سيد المقدم الركن سمو الشيخ خالد بن حمد آل خليفة قائد قوة الحرس الملكي الخاصة على اهتمامهم المباشر ومتابعتهم للفريق وتذليل كافة الصعاب التي ساهمت في إنجاز هذه المهمة حفظ الله جلالتكم وأدامكم للبحرين ولشعبها سندا وعزا وفخرا سيدي His Majesty expressed thanks to the champions and congratulated them which he said adds to the list of national achievements in all fields He affirmed that it represents an incentive to achieve further success and the Kingdom's message of peace and security across the world has been affirmed through the effort of reaching the summit. He praised the determination and bravery of the Royal Guard team who carried the Kingdom's banner to the summit and expressed pride in the Royal Guard at the Bahrain Defence Force in protecting the safety, unity and development of the Kingdom. He said that they represent the Kingdom's shield and praised the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Khalid in supporting and following up with the team. His Majesty also highlighted the humanitarian efforts that have been conducted in Nepal, which affirms the Kingdom's principles of coexistence and fraternity. He thanked Nepal for its hospitality, which reflects a strong bilateral ties. An appreciation for the efforts of the Royal Guard team, His Majesty gave them the Medal of Bahrain and wished them further success.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and President of Gulf Fair Board of Directors Zayed bin Rashid Zayani, where he dedicated a model of a plane to His Majesty on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of establishing Gulf Fair. His Majesty expressed thanks for the dedication, hailing the efforts of the President and members of Gulf Fair in developing the company's performance and services. He noted the important achievements made by the company since its launch and its reputation among various regional and international companies. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's support to the company for being a national carrier which contributed during its march of over 70 years to enhancing air transport services in the region and establishing the values of Arab hospitality for which Bahrain is known. He commended the efforts of Bahraini caterers and the company's various operational and air navigation sectors which continue to make achievements. His Majesty wished Gulf Air's president and all affiliates success and progress in developing the kingdoms and the company's services, raising its status and increasing its competitiveness at global levels. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received two judges for the Court of Cassation where they swore oath before His Majesty following their appointment to the court. His Majesty expressed pride in the history of the kingdom and its achievements in the judicial field and affirmed the independence of the courts as well as his support for qualified expertise in the field in order to enhance the principles of justice, equality, freedom and the rights of all citizens and residents. He congratulated the judges and wished them success. He also expressed appreciation for the members of the judicial authority and pointed out the strides that the field has witnessed in the kingdom. The Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa today chaired a meeting of the Government Executive Committee in which latest COVID-19 developments were discussed as well as the encouraging downward trend of daily active cases in line with the decisions and precautionary measures currently in effect. The committee highlighted that the measures currently in place aim to safeguard the health of all the government's top priority. The committee further reviewed the existing programs and initiatives within the financial and economic stimulus package that has contributed to mitigating the impact of the repercussions of the global pandemic on the kingdom's economic sectors, especially small and medium enterprises. Following a presentation provided by the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, it was decided to extend the precautionary measures for an additional week to maintain the declining trend of daily cases. For their part, the task force added that these sectors will be resumed gradually after the prescribed period and based on medical data and developments. The task force concluded by reiterating the importance of following all precautionary measures a responsibility for all citizens and residents, noting that the measures put in place are to safeguard the health of the kingdom's community. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular session presided over by its chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The council hailed the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to begin vaccinating Bahraini citizens residing abroad and to launch the financial and economic stimulus package to address the economic repercussions of the pandemic. The council hailed the royal appreciation for the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in combating the pandemic. The council commanded ended His Majesty's appreciation for the national efforts of frontline workers and their contributions to the success of handling the pandemic, noting the appreciation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince by granting them two exceptional steps of promotion in the civil service or their equivalent. The Council expressed its deep appreciation for Team Bahrain's precautionary plans and procedures that reduce the number of active cases. It also expressed pleasure and pride the sense of responsibility demonstrated by citizens and residents for receiving the vaccination. The Council noted Saudi Arabia's decision to limit the Hajj season this year to its citizens and residents, adding that the wise decision affirms the keenness of Saudi Arabia led by the custodian of the two holy mosques and the crown prince to hold the Hajj season safely. 
The Minister of Health, Faiq Salah, inaugurated the first specialized clinic at El Shamil Medical Center to implement a new treatment protocol for active COVID-19 cases using Stotrovitmab and drugs that develop monoclonal antibodies as part of the kingdom's continuous efforts to combat the coronavirus. During the inauguration attended by the British Ambassador to Bahrain, Roddy Drummond, health sector's officials and a delegation from the Glaxo Smith Klein Company, the Minister of Confirmed the government's keenness to deliver the best and latest approved treatments for infected persons, as well as to protect them from the COVID-19's dangerous health repercussions. She pointed out that the challenges created by the pandemic require more efforts to confront it, especially regarding ways to consolidate the health security of societies, stressing that the kingdom will continue adopting pioneering initiatives and exerting all efforts to combat the virus. The minister also said that the visiting delegation from GSK will be informed closely about Bahrain's experience as well as train the medical staff on the guiding principles on using the right medicine and implementing the protocol of the new drug to achieve efficiency and maximum benefits. Sotrovimab is under the medical supervision of government hospitals and will not be available for sale in pharmacies or private hospitals. The president of World Customs Organization, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the organization's meeting where he discussed the organization's efforts in combating the pandemic. I would like to express my pride in the meritorious efforts of the members and the Secretariat of the World Customs Organization to deal constructively with the global pandemic and its impacts on the global economic situation. Most of the global focus has shifted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. It has without a doubt had an effect on the global economy on a scale never seen before. However, good outcomes were achieved through continuous cooperation and coordination, which enabled the WCO to continue its regular meetings and arrange extraordinary meetings when the need arose. Also, the organization was successful in implementing alternative solutions to deliver the necessary programs. As we look back and move ahead, we must remember the officers we have lost due to the pandemic or in the performance of their duties. We must also pay tribute with great appreciation and respect to our heroes on the front line for the sacrifices they are making in order to accomplish their work and facilitate trade and travel. Customs worldwide have played and continue to play a critical role in the fight against the pandemic as part of the frontline teams. In the midst of, of the pandemic, they have particularly played a key role in facilitating the movement of relief consignments and essential goods. Now, we find ourselves in a new stage, which is one of recovery. The distribution of vaccines, in large part thanks to customs, has taken place in a smooth and secure manner, and our citizens are now reaping the benefits of being able to be protected against this deadly virus. Challenges always offer great opportunities. We must ensure that the WCO and its members are capable of meeting the challenges of the current situation, as well as developing our strategic foresight capabilities. Furthermore, the challenges we are facing it is time to find alternative financial sources of income for the WCO. There are a number of areas into which we may need to put extra effort going forward to continue with our recovery process. For this, the work of the Policy Commission and the Council will be key to continue to guide the global customs community in the right direction. I look forward to constructive and forward-thinking dialogue during the entire week. I particularly want to see discussions that will result in positive recommendations to help us overcome the adversities that we are confronted with 
and to continue shaping the future of customs. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,045,317 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 910,436 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Minister of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 7,071 with 1,003 recoveries, 403 registered new cases and 5 deaths. 221 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 181 are contacts of active cases and one is travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.